I hate intros, My Hero Academia Season 2. We kick things off the day after the villain's attack on UA in Season 1. Jump on over to the students of Class 1A where we learn about the upcoming UA Sports Festival from the Crippled Eraserhead. We find out a little bit of lore about Uraraka who wants to be a hero for money so that she can help her family. Also that she was freaking adorable as a kid. <laughs> Midori goes to have lunch with All Might where he is told by All Might that the festival is his chance to make his first big impression on the world. Episode 2. With the sports festival just around the corner, all the other classes come to check out their competition in Class 1A. Leaving Tabaku go to stir things up with basically everybody by calling them extras, which technically is just accurate. Amongst the crowd is Hitoshi Shinso, who didn't make it into the hero course and was placed in general studies instead. We also meet Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu, who is passionate and loud, like pretty much everybody else in the show. The festival finally rolls around and all the students from the hero course, general studies, support course and last the nerds from the business course take the field. The first event is a four kilometer obstacle race with all the students participating. When the race starts, students are cut off by the robots used in the entrance exam from season one. Dororoki freezes them and passes through taking the lead. Episode 3. We find out that Kirishima and Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu have near identical powers and help dispose of the robots. Since Midoriya can't control his power yet, he grabs part of a robot and hopes that it helps him out later. The second obstacle is the fall where Mei Hatsume makes her appearance and uses her beloved inventions to cross the canyons. The third obstacles a minefield that slows everybody down, allowing Midoriya to finally catch up. Bakugo and Todoroki are in the front fighting with one another while Midoriya digs up a bunch of mines and uses the shield to detonate them all at once. He uses the explosion to propel him into the lead where he detonates even more mines, slowing down Bakugo and Todoroki. The final stretch is close between the three of them, but Midoriya ends up coming in first, which normally you would think is a good thing, until the remaining 42 contestants find out that the second event is a cavalry battle where they are given points based off of the position they finished in the obstacle race. Since Midoriya finished in first, he's worth 10 million points, which makes him an obvious target to all the other students. Episode 4. The total points of the team members are added up and contestants wear a headband indicating the point value. The objective is to take other teams' headbands and accumulate points, but you can't intentionally make them fall. So all the students start breaking up into teams. Midoriya teams up with Uraraka and they ask Ida to join as well, but he turns him down because he wants to compete with Midoriya and not follow him. So they are forced to settle with Hatsume and Tokuyami as the other two members. In the beginning of the event, a lot of teams target Midoriya because of the high point value, so they are fleeing with the jetpack that Hatsume had. Meanwhile, people start noticing that a lot of headbands have gone missing, and the one responsible, Nato Monoma, takes Bakugo's headband as well. He then makes the mistake of taunting Bakugo, shifting all that crazy pent-up aggression Bakugo has for Midoriya over to Monoma. And in the last scene, Midoriya comes face-to-face -face with Todoroki's team. Episode 5. While Todoroki's team is going for Midoriya, a couple of other teams have the same idea, so Todoroki freezes them and takes a quick detour to relieve them of some easy headbands. Now they set their sights back on Midoriya, whose jetpack had stopped working and have been cornered. Meanwhile, Bakugo and Monoma face off, while Monoma uses his ability to copy other people's quirks to fend off Bakugo's advances. Back over to Midoriya, who has succeeded successfully dodged Todoroki's attacks for 5 minutes now in a small space, so Ida is forced to use his secret move to secure the 10 million point headband. After losing the headband, Midoriya's team panics and charges to get it back. Todoroki has sworn to never use his left side flames, but he subconsciously activates them because he feels so overwhelmed by Midoriya. Back over to Bakugo, who successfully takes two headbands off of Monoma, but isn't satisfied and continues to break through their defenses, taking all of their headbands. Midoriya is able to control one for all and swipe through Todoroki's defenses, grabbing one of the headbands, but he misses the 10 million point headband. In the end, and the top four teams, Midoriya, Todoroki, Bakugo, and Shinso advance to the next round. Episode 6. While talking to Todoroki, Midoriya finds out that the reason he doesn't use his fire quirk is because he resents his dad, the number two hero, Endeavor. Endeavor forced Todoroki's mom into marriage just so he can make a child strong enough to be All Might. We also learn that the scar on Todoroki's face is from his mom throwing boiling water on him because she is repulsed by his left side. Anyways, back over to the festival where the remaining 16 competitors are going to fight 1v1 in a single elimination style tournament. Ojita and Shoto both drop out because they can't remember the cavalry battle so they don't feel like they deserve to be in the finals. Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu replaces one of them and the second replacement is Ibara Shiozaki. For the first round, Midoriya is placed up against Shinso. When the battle starts, Shinso begins insulting Ojiro, which procs a response from Midoriya. After Midoriya yells, he suddenly freezes like he's in a trance. Yeah. Episode 7. Shinso's quirk is brainwashing, but he needs the victim to answer him before he can use it. He uses his brainwashing to make Midoriya start to walk out of bounds. Right before he steps out and loses, he hallucinates the former heroes who had one for all before him. This clears his head just enough to break his fingers using one for all, and this snaps him out of the brainwashing. From then on, he avoids talking and bum rushes Shinso. They throw hands for a bit before Midoriya Judo tosses him out of bounds. <laughs> 
Vitoria tells All Might about the vision he had, and All Might says that it happened to him too, so don't pay too much attention to it. In the next match, Seto is slightly mismatched against Todoroki and gets immobilized in a mountain of ice. Episode 8. The third match is between Kaminari and Shiozaki. Shiozaki uses her vine quirk to block his electrical attacks and restrains him, winning her the match. The fourth match is between Ida and Hatsume, but really Hatsume just wants to use this opportunity to go Hyper Omega sell out for her support items. After her sales pitch, she throws the match and Ida wins. The fifth match is between the side characters that nobody really cares about, Ashido and Aoyama, where Ashido wins with a solid uppercut. Match number six is Tokuyami squaring off against Yaoyorozu. Tokuyami relentlessly attacks with Dark Shadow and Yaoyorozu ends up out of bounds before she can even retaliate. The two hard bros, Tetsetsu and Kitashima, throw hooks and it ends up being a draw, so when they regain consciousness, they're gonna arm wrestle to decide the winner. And in the last scene, Uraraka is getting ready to go up against Bakugo for the final match of the first round. Episode 9. Uraraka relentlessly attacks Bakugo, trying to touch him to activate her quirk, but he fends off the assault with explosions. The whole time doing this, she's storing up more and more debris above him and launches her surprise attack. When she springs her trap, he blows away all the debris, and even though she tries continuing after her plan failed, her body collapses, making Bakugo the winner. Back over to the Hard Bros, where Kitashima wins at arm wrestling. In the second round, Midori is first up to fight again, and he's against the newly formed rival, Todoroki. Episode 10. The fight between Midori and Todoroki turns into a battle of fatigue, with Todoroki refusing to use his flames, but his body can't keep producing ice. On the other hand, Midori is holding up the continuous ice attacks by breaking his fingers to deflect the ice. Eventually, he's re-breaking his fingers, and it gets to the point where he can't even move them, so he breaks his thumb on his cheek. We get some flashbacks of Todoroki's mom going crazy, which is when she burns Todoroki with the boiling water. After that, Endeavor had her hospitalized, which is why Todoroki detests his dad and his power so much. Eventually, the fight gets to the point where Todoroki is forced to use his flames, but he still doesn't entirely accept them. After a massive clash, Midori is unconscious after being hurled out of bounds, making Todoroki the winner. Episode 11. Recovery Girl says that she's not going to heal wounds like this again, so he needs to learn to control his power. Back over to the matches, Shiozaki is ran out of bounds by Ida, and Tokoyami easily knocks out Ishida. Kirishima goes up against Bakugo and ultimately gets too fatigued from continuously blocking his explosions. Todoroki is back to not using his flames, but he still manages to beat Ida in the semis. Tokoyami loses to Bakugo because Dark Shadow is countered by the light from the explosions. After the fight, Ida gets a call from his mom, explaining that his older brother Tensei, who he looks up to, was gravely injured by a new villain. In the last scene, we get a look at the hero killer Stain, who is approached by Kurogiri requesting a meeting with him. Episode 12. In the finals between Todoroki and Bakugo, Todoroki launches ice attacks, but Bakugo blows up the ice with his explosions. Bakugo comes at him with everything he has, and Todoroki comes close to using his left side, but decides in the last moment not to, and he loses the match because of it. Bakugo is pissed because he won without Todoroki giving it his all, so Midnight has to use her aroma to put him to sleep. After that, he's restrained and forced to take the medal. After the finals, Todoroki still isn't sure how to feel about his power, so he decides to go see his mom, who's still institutionalized from when she threw water on him. Episode 13. The students find out they're going to be interns under various pro heroes who sent them individual offers. Most of the episode is them making up hero names for their internships and deciding where to go. We find out that Ida's brother has no feeling in his legs, so he can't continue doing hero work. He wants Ida to take up his hero name and getting him to carry on his legacy. Midori gets an offer from Gran Torino, who is an old friend to All Might's predecessor and knows about One for All. Ida, on the other hand, had picked an agency in Host City, which is where his brother was attacked, which Eraser had found strange because he got better offers. Episode 14. Midori goes to see Gran Torino, who at first looks like he's dead, but really he just spilled some food. He spars with Gran Torino, who's bouncing off the walls all over the room and takes Midoriya down without any trouble. Stain meets with Shigaraki, who is wanting him to join the League of Villains, but Stain refuses because they pretty much want to kill everybody. Meanwhile, all the other students are off on their internships, including Todoroki, who went to work with his dad in Denver at his agency. Midoriya's training starts to bear fruit when Gran Torino makes him realize that instead of focusing one for all in a single part, he should maintain it throughout his entire body. Episode 15. All Might meets with his police friend now, Masa Tsukachi, who talks about the Nomu they detained and the attack on USJ from Season 1. After learning from Tsukachi that somebody has the ability to give quirks, All Might questions if that man is on the move again. After talking to Stain for a while, Shigaraki decides that he doesn't want to work with somebody like this, so Stain is returned to host. Before he goes, Stain takes a second to explain that heroes just want money these days, so by killing heroes, he hopes to reform the system. Shigaraki doesn't like him, so he lets loose three Nomus on the city to hunt down Stain and kill him. Midori is passing through hosts to go to another city with Gran Torino when their train is hit by a fight between one of the Nomus and a hero. Gran Torino tells Midori to stay on the train and goes to fight the Nomu. Ida 
Yuna goes off by himself hunting for Stan and finds him attacking the hero native. Episode 16. Gran Torino is fighting against the Nomu when Endeavor shows up and burns the Nomu with his flames. Meanwhile, Midoriya finds out from Manuel that Ida went off by himself, so he goes looking for him. Jump on over to Ida, who gets dumpstered by Stain, but Midoriya comes in to save him while sending their location for help. Native and Ida are paralyzed from Stain's quirk, but he can only activate the quirk after he tastes the victim's blood, which means he's probably a walking vat of STDs. Stain goes to kill Ida again, but this time is saved by Todoroki. Todoroki had come to the city as a part of his internship with his dad and got Midoriya's location, so he went to check it out. Midoriya was paralyzed by Stain and recovered, so he helps Todoroki fight against Stain, but then gets paralyzed again. We learned that Todoroki had made peace with his mom and now accepts his flame quirk. He took the internship with his dad because he can learn a lot from him, but he hasn't forgiven him and he doesn't plan to. The episode 17. Ida is able to finally move again just in time to save Todoroki who's about to take a heavy shot. Him and Midoriya are able to knock Stan unconscious and tie him up. Endeavor and Gran Torino finish off the Nomo that they were fighting with, so Gran Torino starts heading over to Midoriya. Meanwhile, Endeavor blows off the head of a second Nomu, leaving just one left who starts to fly away. Gran Torino finds Midoriya right before the last Nomu flies in and tries to take away Midoriya. Stain is able to break from his bindings and kill the Nomu, showing that he isn't aligned with the League of Villains. He delivers a rousing speech, dripping with animosity and determination, and then passes out. Episode 18. The next day, the chief of police, Kenji Sudagame, tells him that they shouldn't have been fighting without permission from pro heroes. Because of this, the story is instead told that Endeavor apprehended Stain, and nobody knows that the students helped. Jump on over to All Might, who gets a call from Gran Torino, where they discuss that the master of Shigaraki is presumed to be All for One. All for One is the villain that killed All Might's master and dealt the severe wound to All Might on his abdomen. Stain's rousing speech got posted online, and is starting to gain traction amongst villains who support his ideologies. Episode 19. All the internships are still going on while Midoriya is recovering in the hospital. We jump over to Asui, who is working under Selkie as a naval hero. Tagging along is Selkie's subordinate, Sirius, who is helping show Asui the ropes. Selkie is trapped by some smugglers, so Sirius and Asui have to go and try and stop them, but the aqua villain Innsmouth gets the upper hand. Before he can do anything, Selkie finds where they are and apprehends the villain. Episode 20. The internships are coming to a close, and once back, Midoriya talks with All Might. All Might tells him about the villain All for One, who has the ability to take and give quirks to people. We learn that All for one had a little brother who was small and sickly but had a strong sense of justice. Since he thought he was quirkless, All for One passed down a quirk to stock power. But his brother had a hidden quirk that allowed him to pass down quirks, so when he combined it with the ability to stock power, One for All was born. The younger brother was defeated by All for One, so he passes down his power in hopes that the future generations would gain enough strength to defeat him. Because All for One had accumulated so many quirks, he doesn't age and is close to invincible, so All Might explains that the day will come where Midoriya will have to fight him. Midoriya is on board with this as long as All Might is there, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Yebisu 21. Once back from the internships, the students have to prepare for final exams. After the written portion, they're split up into teams of two and assigned a teacher that they're gonna have to fight. Midoriya is teamed up with Bakugo going against All Might. The first fight is Kirishima and Sato versus Cementos, where they can't keep up with the stamina, so the students fail. Yebisu 22. Ectoplasm almost defeats Asui and Tokuyami by summoning a giant clone of himself. Luckily, they use a plan to have Dark Shadow sneak handcuffs onto Ectoplasm, allowing them to pass the test. Ida and Ojiro take on Power Loader for their test, where Ida launches as Ojiro past Power Loader to the escape gate, passing the test as well. Now we take a look at Todoroki and Yao Yorozu who are going against her racer head. Yao Yorozu has been having confidence issues, so when she devises a plan to subdue her racer head, he allows himself to be caught because he's a big ol' softy. Episode 23. Uraraka and Aoyama go against 13, where Aoyama throws off Uraraka by asking if she likes Midoriya. Although she was flustered, she still uses her training from the internship to cuff 13. Ashido and Kaminati fail when they run out of time after being countered by the principal who uses insane predictions to slow them down. Kuda and Jiro take down present Mike in their test with the help of some creepy crawlers that Kota controls. Shoji acts as a distraction against Snipe, allowing Kagakure to sneak up and cuff him. Minata gets his time to shine against Midnight after she puts Seto to sleep. He uses his quirk to subdue her and then carries Seto to the escape gate. And finally, it's time for Midori and Bakugo to face up against All Might in their test. Episode 24. The start of the fight is really rough because Bakugo is obsessed with fighting head-on while Midoriya is constantly trying to run away. They finally agree to work together and set up a trap for All Might with Midoriya using Bakugo's gauntlet to hit him with an explosion, then they make a break for the gate. Bakugo starts injuring himself while buying Midoriya some time so All Might knocks him unconscious to prevent further harm. Midoriya hurts his back as well, but still lands a solid punch on All Might which brings All Might to his limits. 
This buzz Midori had enough time to grab Bakugo and carry him through the gate. In the last scene, we see some new villains joining the league because of Stain's inspiration. The episode 25. The students are informed that they're going to be going to the woods for their summer camp, so they go to a shopping mall to prepare for their trip. They all split up and Midori is alone and just so happens to run into Shigaraki, who threatens to kill people in the mall if they don't talk. While talking with him, Shigaraki comes to the conclusion that the reason he hates Stain and Midori so much is because of All Might and he wants to kill him even more now. Udodaka sees them, which cues Shigaraki's exit. They alert the police and look for him, but are unable to track him down. In the last scene, there's a sinister doctor who is talking with the newly revealed All for One. All for One is happy about Shigaraki's newfound conviction and reveals that he is planning on making Shigaraki his successor. And as soon as I heard that, I realized that the only thing I hate more than intros is outros.